Hello everybody, I am Angry Bird. We have another Steel Division League cast for you. This time we have Sean versus Curbs. And should be a great game. Curbs' first match in the Steel Division 2 League. So hopefully you've enjoyed the cast so far. If you have always helps to drop me a like and if you haven't subscribed already then uh, please do so and you won't miss any of the action so up on the left hand side in red we have Sean he is playing this match with the 2e blinde or the second French armoured and he's playing on balanced income, which is quite strange for a deck utilising the second French armoured. Usually you see the, set, the French played on vanguard income, potentially sometimes maverick income, but you tend to see them played as a very early deck. Whereas Sean playing it with balanced, looking to go into phase C, and uh, he has plenty of Shermans in those later phases, as well as the M10 tank destroyers and even the M4A3 Spar Sparhees in the uh, late phases. So it's going to be interesting to see where this goes, and uh, very excited to see the DB7B smoke plane. Will we see that unit in action? I'd love to see that one brought out by Sean. Fingers crossed we'll see that, but certainly like most French players, starting off with those M8 recon vehicles, he has 8, sorry, uh, 10 in phase A, and then he also has the M8s in the tank tab, another 16, so he has 26 M8s at the start of this game. This could get overwhelming. We'll see how that goes on and whether he does actually use all of those units. So on the right hand side in blue, we have Curbs. He is playing the 14th Infantry on Vanguard Income. So Curbs on this map, he's definitely going to have to look to make the breakthrough early on and uh, hold out through Phase C. So we're going to look for him to attack early and based on his, you know, the units that he's put down, he looks potentially attack could go into the north, although there are quite a few units in the south as well. So potentially attacking both the northern and the southern bridge. In terms of his deck, well, we know the 4th, 14th Infantry is a great all-rounder. It has great infantry in those Begleit Grenadiers and Begleit Pioneers as well as the Pioneer SVTs in B phase. Also, a lot of Tigers or a, a, a medium amount of Tigers. <laughs> Quite a few Tigers can be brought in. He's got four in B phase and four in C phase. So those Tigers can really take on the Shermans that, French, that the French deck brings out. And Sean, could it could prove fairly difficult for him to... You know take those out he's gonna have to overwhelm them with the numbers but he does have the deck set up to overwhelm with numbers interestingly the 14th infantry get a lot of support guns they've got the ig 290s the russian um ig in a phase and then the ig 18s the german <laughs> igs in b phase so the uh, the a phase don't have the heat shells on them but still a lot of support guns and paired with the fk 288s they can also fulfill the support role and um, so plenty of support guns to kind of overwhelm the french infantry and you know the french infantry can be light on the ground so if he can do that then potentially you know his armor can take on those m8s and uh, he can uh, win out overall in terms of his air force, it's strange to see the uh, B phase JU-88 napalm. Is that the napalm bomber? 
Very strange to see that used in competitive play. It's usually not used because Napalm is not as strong in SD2 as it was in SD1. So it would be interesting to see if that works for Curbs. So both players choose an interesting aircraft. And uh, based on the start of the game, Curbs going very heavy in the north. Uh, looking to attack over the river and uh, Sean even with balanced income looks like he's making attack in the center ground and uh, both sides in the south uh, setting up for defense so it will be interesting to see whether Sean continues with his attack in the center it looks like just a hell of a lot of M8s are gonna push through there whereas in the north Curbs just pushing through with a hell of a lot of infantry. Only one M8 there, so potentially, you know, this could go well for him. But here comes the charge of the M8s. Well, pinning down uh, the Grenadier DP and the FK288. It can deal with them, but not all of them all at once. So how many can it take down? It only takes down one before it's pinned down. And wow, the, this is, this is going to prove difficult now. The IG-290 doesn't have the heat shells and the Alf Clara trying desperately to get into the cover of the forest and basically Sean just breaking through with those, those M8s. I mean, it's a well-known tactic with the French to use these M8s at the start of the game, but usually most players do it with a Vanguard income. So, wow, look, that Stug... Was that a Stug? The Stug 3E, I think, went down to the Canon 57 mil at the bottom. And uh, that, that FK288 is going to find it trouble surviving. There's a, another FK288 that is coming through and potentially could pick off one or two before the others attack. But I think Sean, yeah, he's now pushing forwards and trying to take that out. It does take down one of the half tracks, but really he needs to get rid of the M8s. And uh, I think the number of fire coming down now is perhaps too great. In comes the ME410. Will it get the bombs off in the right place? It does take down some of the infantry. Four backs, a couple of units, but not quite enough. The M8 Spahi with the radio pushing forwards and uh, being rather cautious with that M8 Spahi. He has picked out the Grenadier DPs and Curbs really... The problem with this attack it means that Kerbs has to deal with all of the, these attacking units before he can make attacks of his own and he's only got Vanguard income so this is a great tactic from Sean because Kerbs right now Vanguard income he should be making the plays he should be making the attacks whereas actually he's trying to deal with and clear up all of these M8 units whereas Sean's able to reinforce his front while Kerbs is doing that and then eventually, you know, delay the game to B and C phase where he can use his overwhelming numbers of Shermans to try and take on those Tigers. So another ME410 coming in. Will this one pick up some kills? Does pick up one of the M8s. The uh, Panzer II Luxus coming across from the south. I think one of them, yeah, one here just got taken out and the other's transmission damage. But those M8s are slowly getting picked off now. The Stug on the hill. Beautiful positioning to pick them off as they retreat down this road. Can it get another shot off? Just doesn't. And uh, he's, he's kind of a bit unlucky that they're falling back quicker than he can fire at them. Curbs, he did manage to get a Blight Grenadier across the river, but on its own... It won't do a great deal. And in comes the DB7, the uh, smoke plane, looking to smoke off the stuck. <laughs> wow. I, uh, I'm i not quite sure about that play. And it didn't even... It didn't even drop. Did it drop? It didn't drop its payload. So... The uh, ME109 G4 is pretty stressed out from the anti-air units. The Bofors, fantastic anti-air units. And, um, well, that uh, smoke plane is sticking around and I just wonder whether it's a bit of a bait rather than, you know, trying to be used. It's bringing the ME109s back under the Bofors and down it goes. That's a loss for Kerbs. He needs those fighters 
and the DB7 still not dropping its smoke. The Beglite Grenadiers, I think, did they just get discovered? Potentially. But um, the Stug engaging targets that it can see and Sean moving forward the Cannon 57 mil. Is it finally going to drop its payload? No. So I'm not sure what is going on with Sean and this smoke plane. But more IGs coming in to uh, clean up the infantry. And Kerbs, his early phase he has been stunted. The M8 the Spahi and the uh, Sappers just trying to find the Beglite Grenadiers and push them out of position. No anti-tank on that unit, so that M8 Spahi is going to easily deal with them. The, uh, the DB7 now retreating, having not used its payload at all, so... Strange one there, I'm wondering whether that was just a pure bait from Sean. So the IG actually takes out one of the M8s. They can still do it with those HE shells, so... It did manage to take one out, the Stug 3G... Hopefully... Wow, is it that gonna now go down to the 57mm? Transmission damaged on the first shot. Looks like that was a bounce on the second. And uh, is tanking those shots, but he can't do it forever. He's now hit the... Oh, wow, he's got the gun jam now. So that's Stug 3. Pretty much out of action and does go down again. So that 57 mil in a brilliant position there. Panzer Shrek's coming in to potentially, you know, take out these the M8 and the half tracks. And the other M8s down here just holding positions. And I like the way that Sean has just... He kind of... He didn't... He had to fall back these M8s, but he's got them across the river into uh, positions, you know, behind the tree line. So they can't really be spotted. And uh, he's just holding this flag by the fact that Kerbs doesn't have the units here to, to hold it. And look at this. More M8s coming in. More Shermans as well. I wonder whether he actually does use tw these 26 M8s that he's got in his deck. Kerb's now bringing in the Ali FH-18M, and I feel like that's a bit early. I mean, he's bringing it into count of the, the Cannon 57mm, which is the correct move, but... He needs to reinforce with infantry and, and get troops on the ground to hold these flags and units that can take out these M8s. And now the... Shermans as well, so potentially maybe I would have liked to have seen a, more armoured units come out, more Stugs, but he also, you know, if he brings Stugs out, then the, the 57mm cannon, you know, can counter it, so I guess that's why he's brought in the artillery piece, but no radio currently on this front line, so he's, he's not f utilising that to its fullest. So the Panzer Shreks have now come on and it looks like one of the M8s has gone down, the M8 Spar here, and he's trying to push this through and take out these half tracks and potentially push all the way through to take out the the ones further south as well. Pushing Blagite Grenadiers across the river, which is a nice move here. Hopefully he's able to pick up some ground before the M8s can come in and reinforce. The IG actually in quite a nice position to sort of cover this central ground. And hopefully once Kerbs brings these Stern Pioneers forwards, he might be able to take out the uh, Sappers and make up some more ground. He is now at a 15-9 down. And this is quite incredible really from a C phase French deck. I guess those M8s at the start of the game, they are very, very strong. And Sean's not given Kerbs a chance to breathe. Really, he's... I guess Kerbs maybe started this game against a balanced French deck and wasn't expecting the kind of push that Sean put through. I mean, I certainly wouldn't have expected that from a balanced deck. I'd have expected a defensive setup all along the river 
to which someone playing a vanguard can choose their moment to attack, but it really didn't happen. Must have caught Curbs off guard. So the sappers have pin, been pinned down and the front line finally pushed back and Curbs recaptures this central position. The uh, Bayo Schwimm 210 off map coming in and striking down right on this forest position does take down one of the half tracks. I think he's going to get unlucky only to take one of them down. The other's falling back. How are these avoiding this off map? This is incredible. Wow, I'm surprised that uh, they man managed to, to survive that one, but he is now bringing this swim forwards and potentially going to, you know, push on this or off map this position as well. More Panzer II looks coming in and he's trying to uh, take on these light units with the Panzer II looks, which they definitely can do, but they're also very vulnerable themselves. More Panzer Shreks coming in and now the Stug 3 leader. Let's have a look at this unit. I do love this unit. With the uh, 14th Infantry Insignia. Very lovely unit. Right, let's get back to the action. The VKs, immediately one of them getting a spawning hit. But do get the ammo explosion on the M8 Sparhe. That will hurt. So all three of them together can certainly deal some damage. We've just seen that. So a half track and another M8 engaging. One VK901 down. Although a half track on Sean's side down, looks like another M8 down, although one of the crew killed. So these Panzer II Luxes have done a good job for Curbs. Another off map coming in and he's pushing across the river and this is beautiful play. A bailed out M8 in the centre, potentially to the Tiger E or the, uh, probably the FK288 there. And he's slowly making his way back into this game but... The, the income is not on his side. The final Panzer II looks is gun jammed and he's trying to retreat that back, but it's going to be difficult what he's going to do with that unit. I guess he can just keep it there behind the forest to hold this flag, but I don't see that one getting back into action because he's going to have to bring a support truck up and it's a very dangerous position to do that. Kerb's going to hold in this hilled position with the Stugs and he's used that position before. He's trying to just pick off the M8s when he can spot them. I'm not sure whether the final off map strike would come in but if it did come in on this position wow that would be glorious. Let's try and keep a lookout. Unfortunately with the uh, patch change I don't think we're gonna see the off map placed before it actually comes down so I'm gonna have to try and keep a good eye out for that. Half two mortar half tracks in the center, so Sean looking to uh, utilize those mortar half tracks and uh, try and make plays that way. Curbs is kind of he's, he's slowly pulling his way back here, but uh, I'm worried about the game going long and the fact that Sean has the C phase income and the C phase deck so. The longer this game goes, certainly it doesn't favour Curbs, but he has the units, he has the Tigers that certainly from a distance the French will struggle to take out. So there is still potential here. Here comes the off map. It looks like it's perfectly placed exactly where we wanted it. Let's see if he can make some units, potentially a little bit further forward. Strike's coming in, but he's been very unlucky with that off map. There were some flaming units in here, which potentially were taken out, but... Oh, another one coming in. The sapper taken down to two. I feel like the units in those houses were very unlucky to survive there. The Begleit Grenadier taking shots from the M8s. And uh, we are now into B phase, but more M8s coming in and followed up by f more Char M4A2s. It's just overwhelming numbers on the side of Sean. Curbs pushing forwards with a Stug 3G and 
pretty dangerous. I'd have liked to have seen him keep that one further back and push forward with some infantry, but I guess he's just got to recover flags, hasn't he? It's 13-11 now, so he has pulled it back slightly. He will, however, lose the game in 17 minutes' time if it continues. Infantry caught out in the open, and the... Uh, the M4A2 and the M8s, they are fantastic fire support vehicles. The mortar units are going to rain down fire on this IG and look how quickly they fire when there's two of them together. That IG stood no chance. So, uh, Kerb's actually pushing this off Alfclara really far forwards and... I didn't know that you could take up position here and it be stealth, so... Great little position in future. Keep an eye out for that. Is Kerbs going to counter battery? No, he's still trying to get rid of this Cannon 57 mil. The Stug 3J falling back and potentially if Sean pushes forwards he could pick up the Surrender. But he is not doing that in face of the second Stug further back. He is pushing himself back so the leader Stug will be able to recover. The Alf Clan are pushing forwards trying to recon what's here and he should now know that there's only one M8 and fuel explosion on the Stug. I feel like maybe the M8's got a lucky shot there and took that out. Potentially it was the cannon but I don't feel like that was in the right position so it must have been one of the M8's there. Oh this Panzer Shrek just went down. I thought that was going to get a decent shot off against that M8, but just went down. And look at Sean. He's just holding the Voltigeurs back. So I feel like we're going to get an attack in this northern side. But look at the way Kerbs has set up his infantry. He's got like a defensive line of Stoss troop all the way along. Almost as if, you know, fighting in line, setting up his own front line here. Two Tigers in the centre, and he is using them very far advanced he does have infantry in front of them so they are protected the uh, m57 gun here or the cannon 57 is probably the biggest threat the one further north has now been taken out and these tigers are going to be used to take out the shermans so curbs he's still got a chance in this game 14 minutes left and uh he still has a chance here. The Stern Pioneers find the CDP artillery and should be able to pick up this kill. There's only one of them left, but hopefully they will pick this kill up. Supporting fire from the Stug. Yes, beautiful. Just in time. Pioneer SVT is coming in. Ambitious movement forwards, and uh, I'd like to see him unload those early. One of the Tigers looks like it's gone down, probably to the uh, Cannon 57 mil here. We're missing a lot of these important Tiger kills. One of the Sternpires dropping smoke there to protect the Tiger. Fantastic micro. Absolutely beautiful. The uh, Pioneers, they did unload earlier. I'd like to see them get into the forest though. They do have uh, attack moves forward, so they're engaging with the machine guns. And potentially the SVTs at that range, although now pinned down. The mortars striking down, and yes, Kerbs is now counter-battering those mortars. So that LEFH will come in handy, although I still feel like he could use a radio up here to uh, give it its optimal conditions the mortars are now being well they were being moved by Sean and now they're not so potentially that was kind of lucky he's now moving them again although actually he's now firing so this counter battery could actually take out those those mortars it looks like he has made the attack in the north we've missed it but he has pushed through I mean look at the number of vehicles that he's got the number of M4A2s the number of M8s wow and uh, Sean he has a number of well he's got two gun jammed Stug 3G so I'd like to see a support truck come in potentially to this position back off those Stug 3Gs and then it once once it's fixed those up it can resupply his artillery but 
Kerbs is going to have to be reacting to this attack and there's nothing his infantry can do. There's no anti-tank weaponry on it. So these M4A2s are just going to have a field day. I mean, look at them. Just just not even attack move. Just, just move in, trying to discover the infantry. And Well, that's going to pick up the 1410 again for Sean. It felt like Kerbs was making background, especially in this central area. But... Um, Curbs, unfortunately, the uh, the income game not on his side. Sean was able to build up a number of forces and push that attack through in the north. We'll see whether Curbs can react, and he's he's brought in you know more Stug 3Gs, which certainly enough to deal with the threat at distance. And uh, hopefully, if he can afford some Tigers as well, I think he will still have some in his deck. We've seen perhaps. I think maybe two or three go down, so he should still have about four or five Tigers left. Unfortunately though, income not on his side now, so it may be costly to bring in those Tigers. He's trying to reinforce the central and northern sides, but I'm feeling like this wasn't his game plan. I feel like he went into this with a game plan of to attack straight off the bat. Down goes one of the, uh, what was that, an M4, sorry, an M10A1. And down goes one of those, and the 57 mil is taking fire from the uh, artillery of Kerbs. The Tigery just standing back and firing and crew killing another M10. So he has the advantage with those Tigers. It's just whether he can kind of mass enough of them you know, get a critical mass and look at the movement of Sean using these Shermans to flank round this northern side and uh, really start side shotting these Stugs. They're having to turn to fire, but that leaves them then open to this 57 mil on the bridge. And wow, that's uh, excellent movement there. And those Stugs just in real trouble. Kerbs did bring in the uh, Opal Blitz munitions to fix up the other. Well, the other Stug and the Panzer II looks, and he probably will move now move that back to uh, resupply the artillery piece. Beautiful macro play there. And uh, the Stug 3G, there's only one of them left now. And this, this northern side is looking weak. Not because of the number of units, but just the, these... Well, yeah, because of the number of units... All, all of these M4A2s with the two M8s. Just really difficult for uh, Kerbs to root them out. He's trying to use the IG-18 with its heat shells. And hopefully maybe he can just pick, pick off one or two at a time. There goes the M8. But he's now under fire so I try and maybe want him to back this off and then re-engage later once the, the stress is, is down. And it's recovered its stealth, but unfortunately, I think it's going to go down. The Panzer II looks pushing forwards, but I mean, well, that will take out the infantry, so he's going to have a problem though getting across this gap. Repositioning his Beglite Grenadiers, in comes the smoke plane. Will it now drop? No, it doesn't. I wonder, I wonder if um, Sean is just using that to spot. Anti-air. It's just strange that both times he's not dropped smoke. Potentially this flat fling stressed it out or critical hit it before it could drop smoke, but surprising. So the tiger now taking on units and Kerb's actually pushing the stern pioneers forwards and He's got no anti-tank. I'd like to see him stick to this forest. He has done that. Maybe if he can push south, he can take out that Cannon 57, which will be a great unit to take out because currently it's it's been holding fire and it's waiting for this Tiger to push forwards. In the north, we've got infantry advancing, trying to get across this gap. And will they make it? I think they are now going to make it across the gap. Sean now bringing back the M4A2s to try and counter this little re- push and reinforced by Kerbs. He does pick up the flag and finally we are back to a 12-12. It's taken 24 minutes but Kerbs has pulled it back. 
He's back at the 12-12. Somehow, I don't quite think it's going to last. These two flags are perilously close, and uh, they're really, they're only being held by the slimmest of majority right now. But um, Kerbs has brought his way back into the game, and if he just plays it steady then maybe he can get back into this one. The Canon 57 is now opening up against the Stug. And look at, I'm sorry, the Tiger. Look at the amount of fire it's receiving from the M4A2. It finally goes down to the fuel explosion. The, that uh, Tiger, it did have the radio on it. So the, LA, the LEFH18M will now be radioless once again. I'd have liked to have seen this Stern Pioneer push down to take on this Canon 57. I mean, Kerbs, perhaps he's microing elsewhere, but he he must know that unit is there because he's seen it take out the uh, Tiger, or it has at least revealed itself on the map, so... There is potential that Stug could, uh, that Stern Pioneer could take them out, and the IG's there being used to take out the M8, and infantry across the river, and... This is looking like a decent attack from Kerbs, if he can maintain this. He's back to a 14-10 down. It looks like there's a northern flag there, and this potentially this central compound area has gone down as well. But Kerbs is not out of this game. Although, he's only got five minutes left. And he did stabilise to a 12-12, so he can do it again. He just needs, needs the chance, really. The Voltigeurs, they will go down to the Begleit Grenadiers, and that really relieves a hell of a lot of pressure off this northern flag. No more infantry in this forest. Kerbs won't know that, but once he pushes this Begleit Grenadier forward, he should realise that. The DB-73, is that the... Yeah, the DB-73 with the bombs coming in, taking down the Stoss troop, and uh, still a 14-10 right now. Stern Pioneer still surviving here and potentially these volunteers could be coming in to try and take them out. He's got a little pocket of units here which if he can move these north he could actually take this flag here and give himself a flag. The uh, pack 40 has now come in and that's going to do fantastically well against the M4A2s. He just, Sean's just keeping them in the right spot at the moment he can't the curbs can't find a way to take them on and uh, I know he used a lot of Panzer Shreks earlier it would be fantastic if he could get a Panzer Shrek in there to potentially take some of them out but he's struggling right now the uh, mortar half tracks it looks like one of them has gone down the other trying to target the infantry the uh, Stern Pioneer's finally gone down I think that was a missed opportunity to take that down that Canon 57 and Sean coming in with the volunteers and the uh, wow all the French vehicles or should I say American vehicles are gonna take down these infantry units I feel like that's gonna take away a hell of a lot of territory I mean this the territory wasn't really being used to to hold flags but there was an opportunity there for for curbs so Grenadier DP's coming in and I can't quite remember if these have got the Panzerfaust on them. Yes, they do have the Panzerfaust. But look at that, Sean reacting. How did he know that those units were coming in? Potentially spotted by the Voltigeurs? Probably not. So maybe he just finally, you know, he saw the front line and, and thought, I'm too close to this forest, it's too risky. So, the opportunity being taken away, but this pack 40, it can now engage, takes out one of the M4A2s, and it should take out the others as well. There goes a crew kill, there's only one of them left to threaten there. Will that one go down as well? Yes! So those M4A2s have finally gone down. A lot of pressure relieved from this northern position. If he can get some kind of unit into here, he can pick up another flag, but he's only got two minutes, well, just under three minutes left. And it looks like Sean's massing units in the center to try and push through again. Kerbs desperately trying to get a Tiger into position. 
and uh, potentially another Stug 3G as well, but the, it's taking shots from the Canon 57mm and does go down, that's, that's a harsh loss. Another Tiger coming in, but I don't feel like it's going to get there in time. Potentially Sean is going to push through. The flak filling actually could be his best line of defence. If Sean doesn't push through with armoured units, he really needs some kind of unit to pick up this flag here, but he needs two flags to hold the tide. One of the grenadiers in this compound pinned down, the other one's being fired at, and it's only a matter of time before Sean brings in all his supporting units. And I don't I think I don't think Kerbs is gonna relieve this game now. He has to find two flags to pick up to hold the 12-12 and uh, it looks like it's going to have to be the northern two but they're very well defended and this central flag is coming under pressure so I feel like even if Kerb somehow manages to push into these northern positions this central flag is going to go down so he has now picked one up with the you know the movement forward from this IG-18 needs to get them unloaded so that they can fire on the M4s He is now pushing infantry forward and there's only a Volta Gears and a CDP artillery in there. He, he's only got one minute left on the clock. There is potential but it's, it's going to be real difficult. The Tiger engaging the Volta Gears but there's so many vehicles here. It, it could get overwhelmed. The artillery coming in just trying to, sorry that's the uh, IG-18 attacking the M8. Although, that M8 can do decent work of its own with its HE, so that IG's in trouble. More DB-73 bombers coming in, and they're trying to hold this northern line. But this Stug is pushing forward and potentially could pick up that flag, although he's lost the other northern flag. There's 20 seconds left on the clock. This is tight. I mean, he could get the 12-12 here and potentially just give himself enough time. There's 15 seconds left. I think it all depends on this Grenadier getting into position and then potentially something relieving this, this central flag. He's only got five seconds. He's not going to do it. Wow, what a finish. Kerbs just didn't manage to pull back that 12-12. Sean wins the game, 31 minutes, 56 seconds. And actually, rather an enjoyable game. Definitely not how I expected it to play out. Sean picking that balanced deck, I expected him to set up a defensive line and wait for Phase C to push over with overwhelming numbers. But he didn't give Kerbs a chance. He just pushed straight from the start with those 26 m 8 in A phase and Kerbs unfortunately he had to react to that portion use his units to try and clear up those M8s and because he had to do that that kind of took away from reinforcing his own attacking positions and he just was on the back foot from the start wow Sean picks up the win 3,400 kills to 2,900 losses so not a great deal of difference between them. Let's have a look at the kills for Sean. The Cannon 57 mils, they did do a great job for him. Three stug, uh, three stug kills from that Cannon 57 mil. The other Cannon 57 here down with two stug kills and a Panzer II looks. Those Cannon 57s really did the the bulk of the work of taking out Kerbs' armour, the uh, the M8s and the half tracks and the M4s, they really took out the support guns and the infantry, you know, the unarmoured units. And those Cannon 57 mils, they were the, the units that were taking out the armoured um, tanks on the side of Kerbs. So you cannot underestimate these Cannon 57 mils. Two star veterancy and... Um, potentially that one buffed up there because the other one one star vet but Sean really used those Cannon 57 mils well another one down here lock with the Panzer II Lux, the Tiger E and the Stug 3G and I feel like the use of those units really won the game two more Stug 3G kills another you know two more Tiger E's and Stug 3G's look at these Cannon 57 mil kills fantastic 
I really feel like if those Canon 57mm kills weren't there, I mean, well, let, let's let's see. Let's just see the number of units. So there's three stug 3G or th three stugs. So five stugs, six stugs, and a tiger. So three tigers and seven stugs going down to those cannons, and I feel like they were the units that that won the game. Kerbs, he brought in the uh, artillery piece to take out those Canon 57 mils, but it didn't quite do the job for him. I feel like he was lacking a radio up front to uh, kind of help him out and potentially, I mean, more artillery would have been a good counter, but he, I'm guessing he just didn't have the income. Phase A was where he had the majority of his income and he had to spend it on units to try and clear up those M8s. So the big expensive pieces of artillery, they, um, they're they much harder to afford on that Vanguard income style once you get into Phase B and C and I feel like that happened. I mean, look at this Tiger E. Look at the number of units it's taken out. I mean, it's taken out two cannons of its own, but really, wow. Two M4A2s and two M10s and a hell of a lot of half tracks. You see, this is it. If Kerbs hadn't have lost these Tigers and the Stugs to the cannons, they can easily take out the units on the French side. The Stug there taking out a lot of M8s. There were just too many of them. There were just too many. The uh, Pack 40 taking out those M4s on the northern side. There were just too many units for Kerbs to deal with. I feel like that was the story of this game. Right, let's have a quick look at the table. So this was Kerbs' first game. Unfortunately, he does lose it. And this was game number two. Um, I'm not sure in game number one, Kerbs did lose that as well, so he lost the matchup overall. Sean picked up the full three points, extends his lead at the top. He's now played five, won four, drawn one, 13 points at the top of the table. And he really is pushing out a considerable considerable gap he has played a lot of games up front there is no ne not necessarily an order to it how the players have to play so Sean is definitely getting his games in early the others um you know Gonzo Amber T Kerbs Neff and Walhattie they've only played one game at the moment so they've got a lot of games in hand to you know, bring themselves back into the table. But Sean's picked up victories, I believe. He's picked up victories against the majority of the chasing field. Solo pick, wing picks, he had the draw. And uh, he, he beat Hey Robert. He beat um, Losser and Kerbs. So really, Gonzo, the main threat to him, as well as Solo wing Pixie. You know, if Solo wing Pixie, you know, picks up a lot of wins as well, we could see him doing well, but Gonzo the main threat to Sean at the moment, I would say. Um, we'll see how it all progresses. So, thanks very much for watching. I hope you enjoyed this cast. Please join me again for future casts, and we'll see how the league progresses. If you enjoyed it, please drop me a like. It really helps with the YouTube alpha alth algorithm. It doesn't like these kind of games, so... It does help in that regard. If you want to talk about the game, drop it down in the comments below. I do read all my comments and reply. And finally, if you haven't subscribed, please do so and you won't miss any of the action. I am Angry Bird. I will see you next time.